Beto loves to dance like Donald Trump. <laughs> no, Donald Trump dances like me. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, Donald Trump was like. Uh huh. Welcome to another episode of Christian Podcast. Punto com. Today we have a very special friend in the studio, and we have an audience too. I'm not going to show you, but uh, there's an audience here today. Yes, it's exciting. <laughs> Chance, welcome, Millie. How are you doing today? I'm having a blast. Yeah, I can't believe it. He's here, Beto. Finally. Finally, Chance. How are you feeling? Great. Yeah. To be here. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, tell us about, real quick, tell us about your day today. You were playing soccer. How is soccer going for uh, you? Oh, yes, we're playing soccer and, or actually, I don't like to call it soccer. I like to call it football. So we're Ooh, playing football. I like it. And, you won me over. <laughs> um, we lost one too, but we had like possession 90% of the time. Nice. And we took like 10 shots. They had like one lucky shot. And then they shot a couple other times and they were super lucky. But I was playing as a right mid, and I was trying to rush, but my right wing wasn't coming with me, so it was kind of <laughs> hard. I had one shot on the goal, but nobody was there, so like it was very stressful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. that's how soccer or football is. Yeah, and then somebody stepped on my cleat, which is very painful. Ow. Okay. Well, we're glad you made it. <laughs> you made it to the podcast. And thanks to your mom, too, and I guess your family, you know, for kind of like allowing you to be here because we know yes. you're uh, you're technically still a minor, you know, so <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> just to clarify that. Yeah, you're 14 yes. years old. 14. Yes. And we've known you for a while now, right? You're friends with our yeah, kids. Yeah, seven years, I'm pretty sure, because we wow. met in first grade and Joseph was in second grade. Nice. Okay, so we've known each other for a while. That's cool. And we've kind of seen a little bit of your growth or development or even interest for Christ or Jesus and the Bible, scripture and things like that. So that's super interesting. You know that all of that brought us to have you here as a guest and go a little bit more like deeper into the mind of a 14 year old who follows Jesus, who can't get enough of the Bible, who... What else? I don't know. Who's just like just wants to dig in, yeah, right? Learn more, yes. Yeah, wanting to learn more. So we're going to learn about that journey, okay? okay. So for that, we're going to ask the first question. First question. Millie, you have any questions today? <laughs> ah, Betul always loves to do that. <laughs> yes. Chance, okay. I'm super impressed. Uh, at that point that oh my gosh i think he knows more than me now right <laughs> because he's been reading his oh, like oh. <gasps> and actually I, i went to go back to the bible and started read it again I, i was motivated just by looking at you how good you're doing with this but my first question is what you gonna do with all this knowledge hmm. um oh. well <laughs> Well, I can tell you what I'm doing now. What I'm doing with this knowledge is I'm trying to spread the word through YouTube, just like Beto. I'm doing it in a little bit of a different way. I'm kind of uh, posting videos of famous apologetics with some music in the background and captions. And that's been getting a lot of views recently. <laughs> and great. then I'm I'm starting to actually like interview my friends. Like I, wow. Yeah, I did a debate or like an interview or a conversation with my Jewish friend a couple of days ago. And wow. it was really interesting. Yeah. How did it go? What did What did you learn? What kind of stuff uh, did, you, did you ask? Okay. I didn't ask any questions. He okay. was the one pushing me about my belief. Hmm. And he was basically, hmm, what are the one of the things that he pushed me on? He talked about, um, okay, okay. I know one of the things he was talking about, he was talking about how Jews, it's really hard to become a Christian because they'd get kicked out of um, their family. So like I said, why aren't you a Christian? And he said, because if I was to become a Christian, my family would like, mm. like they wouldn't They say I'm a him. Jew. Yeah, stuff like wow. that. Kind of Catholics when you turn to Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> some, I, I guess some. <clears throat> wow. Well, let's 
let's talk about apologetics. Just first, how do you interpret that word? And to clarify, right? Like for people that are like, what is up? What are you talking about? Apologetics? 14 year old <laughs> reads the Bible. Mm -hmm. What is that to you? What is apologetic? Apologetic is someone who searches for truth through the gospel and tries to, I guess, share it in a, mm -hmm. in a way, definitely. And just wants to know more. They're not just like, oh, their pastor tells them something. Okay. No, mm -hmm. what does the Bible say? I think that's what apologetic is. Wow. That's cool. So what brought you to to start like asking the Bible, like going to the source of, I mean, I, I consider it the source of truth, right? But what brought you to kind of like become a an apologetic yeah. yourself, right? What I brought mean, you to the Bible? My whole life, even when I was like seven, <clears throat> I was always like, I always wanted to like have a conversation and like debate. Mm. And I remember like, like even before, like I like, My whole life, I was Christian. I believed in Jesus. But I don't know if I was, like, in a way, like, really knew where Jesus come from. I didn't really know, like, the details. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know what, like, how do I put it? I didn't really know what the meaning of Christianity was. I just thought, you know, I go to church. I love Jesus. And, like, that's kind of it. But, you know, and then I got older and I wanted to learn more. Because I was like... Older, you mean like you were That's eight? what I'm yeah. talking yeah. about. Yeah. He sounds like he's 40 like me right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I just wanted to... I, I don't know. I just, my whole life, I wanted to know more. And, I, and mm -hmm. then I got into the subject of religion. And then I wanted to know more about Jesus. Because I, honestly, I'm a big fear of losing a debate. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, what I'm, that's a very scary thing for me. Not necessary if I lose a debate that I'm wrong. Because there's a lot of people, like, let's say somebody, like, doesn't know anything about a subject, and then somebody goes at them, and they totally lose the debate. That doesn't mean they're wrong. That just means they didn't have enough information, in a sense. Mm, that makes sense. Yes. Wow. That's epic. I mean, that's a great story. So thank you for sharing that. Um, <clears throat> where did I want to go? I want to go so many places, so I'm just trying to focus. But feel free to interrupt me, Emily, if you have something, because when I see that face... I know you want to say something. <laughs> I, I've just been thinking, you know, like, what is all this? Like, you're so passionate by the truth, mm. but the transformation in your heart. is yeah. the, the part for me is, like, so important. Since I met you, you know, like, seven yes. years ago, you're the sweetest kid, you know, mm -hmm. super fun and goofy yes. and... <laughs> yeah. but, well, just, I, I, but I feel like I can see through your eyes and your heart is huge, mm. huge. And that, that would be my question. You know, I, I know you know more about Jesus. Which role is Jesus in your heart? Mm. That's good. So the question is, what role does Jesus play in my heart? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess without Jesus, you're kind of like, Like, what's the meaning of all this, you know? But I, I've never been like that because I feel like I've always had Jesus in my heart in a sense. Maybe when I was little, I was kind of like more on like, I don't know. I feel like when you're little, you don't really care about religion mm -hmm. like, in a sense. But yeah, when you're three. Yes. And yeah, <laughs> I, I, I love Jesus when I went to church and stuff like that. What did Jesus play in my heart? <clears throat> um, just helping me to know more about him and be more like him, be kind, you know, and share, basically share him, I think. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so some of the stuff that comes to my mind when, you know, having this conversation is one, I mean, we have a lot of background information because you're a friend, right? Yeah. So I think it's, it's a little bit different with other conversations we have with people when, you know, we don't really know mm -hmm. them other yeah. than we read a little bit on their books or stuff like that. But uh, I think to me, what's really exciting and seems like super interesting is the fact that uh, when I read scripture, right in the Bible, there's only a few times when you really read about Jesus in the Bible, right? Because I think there's other yeah. books which are outside of the Bible that talk about Jesus. Uh, But in the Bible, there's only like one mention. I think it's in Luke when it says that when Jesus was 12, he went to Jerusalem. And when he's in Jerusalem, he gets lost. You know, his, his family is coming back. They, they have a festivity every year. They have to go to the big city, right? Because they do. It's, it's just kind of like the 
the Passover feast and whatnot, right? So it's a festival where everybody's supposed to go to this big city. And he gets lost. Well, not, well technically, he, well, he, his family loses him. So the family's on their way back where they come from. And then in the way, you know, it's a caravan. So they're, they're going with hundreds or maybe thousands of people. I don't know how many, but on, as they're on the way, he's like, oh, well, he's probably playing with his cousins or with friends or something, right? And then at some point, like three days later, they realize, hey, I can't oh see my. you. I can't find Jesus, you know? So they go back to Jerusalem and they find him at the temple when he's 12, right? So, I mean... The, I'm not going to say they were lucky because this is God's providence, right? But in a sense, like <laughs> they were lucky. As parents, you know, I would be terrified if I don't see my kid in three, in three days. days. Are you kidding? And I go back and, okay, well, he's at the temple, right? Yeah. But the cool thing is that it says that he was debating with the people at the temple. So but it's kind of well, like what you're doing, you know? <laughs> I mean, at that age, at 12, yeah. he's talking to like the big shots, right? The religious people, the people that know a lot. So that to me, I see, I mean, I almost see like a comparison right there. That's so epic that God stirs the hearts even of, of young people towards him, you know, and even towards apologetics, which is a, like you said, you know, it's like finding truth and going to the Bible for answers. So that's a big topic, you know, so I'm part of us doing this together today. It's hopefully for a chance that uh, more doors will open up for you to debate you know and whether you lose or win you know that'll be a different yeah. uh, topic for a different time but that you can go out and maybe talk to other people that are maybe older than you but take you seriously because you have that same heart that jesus had when he was 12 that hey these things are important i want to be here even to the point that he forgot he had to go back with his family yeah right so i mean that's that's kind of epic so what do you have to say to all of that that i just said <laughs> Uh, I just have a question. Does it um, answer the question of what he was debating or no? Mm, let me think. Well, it, it kind of does. It doesn't really talk about like all the topics, but it says that when the mom found him, so Mary, she finds him and is like, Jesus, you know, like you had us with our heart on uh, whatever the phrase is in English. <laughs> you, you almost give us a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. Right. And he says, didn't you know that... I should be in the matters of the father or in the business of the father. So of my father, I think he said, so that even makes the point that, I mean, I think this, this is written by Luke. So I think Luke is trying to make the case that Jesus is who he said he was. Even at a young age, he was already like revealing glimpses of like, oh, he's truly the Messiah. Right. So I think the fact that he was at the temple discussing important matters and that he said, well, this is, this is the place where I want to discuss who the father is. And this is an interesting topic, too, because the other day I, we were talking to a Jewish woman. And I asked her, well, Jesus, to me, right, my theology is Jesus is God, which for a Jewish is typically not the case, right? But uh, I said something like that, right? Like, oh, Jesus is God. And it's like, well, he, he never said that he was God himself, but he did say, I and the father are one. So I'm like, oh, okay, so that's really interesting that at <laughs> least she understands that he make himself you know, one with the Father. Even though later on in other letters, right, with Paul and stuff, we can, we make Jesus equal to God, you know. So I'm, I mean, <laughs> that's my theology, you know, Jesus yeah. is God. Yeah. But uh, it was interesting that he's debating, the, in a sense, the matters of the Father, who the Father is. Yeah. Well, and if you take him seriously, he declared the Father and I are one. Mm -hmm. So we're yeah. one in the same. <laughs> and even more than that, uh, Exodus 3, Moses stands at the bush and God says, go to Egypt and leave out, lead out the slaves, right? And then Moses is like, who should I say you sent me? And God says, I am who I am. Tell them I am has sent you. Mm -hmm. Then John eight fifty eight, Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. And the Jews like threw the stones at him. Obviously... They knew what he was claiming to be. He claimed to be God because he took mm. what God said to call himself. I am, you know? Yeah. So that, that's what <laughs> I would, that would be my argument against that woman's claim. That's awesome. Well, what a, that's so cool. When you're in these debates, even as you said, you know, you're, or you're trying to do more debates, 
what's your and even the other day you were telling me so I, I want you to kind of like just refresh me but what are some of the feelings you're feeling do you feel maybe even do you feel angry at some of the stuff other people say you know like hey that's i don't know i mean in my words we'll get to my emojis right but i would say that's blasphemous right but uh what kind of feelings do you feel when you're debating do you feel happy do you feel anxiety you feel like man I, I, i'm gonna lose this one what what kind of thoughts go through your mind well, most of my debates are at my school which is a baptist school and um i think in some ways i'm very similar to baptist but i'm culturally orthodox and i have sometimes problems with a lot of the theological um doctrines of Bap the baptist which is but i I don't even uh, know because one of the debates that I do have is the age of the earth, which is like, mm. um, I don't and I don't even know if that's a Baptist belief. I think that's just a personal belief. That's it. Is that directed to one denomination? I, I think I think some denominations for sure have like a stance on that sort of stuff. But I always say it always comes down to whatever people believe, you know, because even mm -hmm. if the denomination believes something. Some people that come to that church are like, ah, I don't, I like, don't really believe like that. Like the rapture, no? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. the rapture and other things like that. So, what, what kind of feelings, like in this case with the, um, with the age of the earth, what kind of feelings do you feel when, when somebody says, you know, the earth is ten thousand years old or stuff like that? Uh, so I don't get mad. I more of get like, you know, because sometimes again, it depends. If I'm debating someone who has. For example, there's this kid, I'm not going to say his name, but he was trying to debate me about it. And he has like no evidence or information for what he believes. So I didn't mm. even debate him because I was like, wow. sure, believe what you believe. But then when it comes to debating like my principal and my teachers, that's a little bit different because they do have reasons for their beliefs. Mm. I don't get mad. I, I don't know if I get frustrated. It's more of like a, I don't know, sometimes I get like, I just it, enjoy it enjoy kind of like having conversations such debating mm. and sometimes i can get frustrated maybe when they're but only when they're attacking me because i never try mm. to attack anybody else like i just say you know that's my opinion you have your opinion i think my opinion mine's right i'm not gonna attack you for that but mm -hmm. then there's some christians that like go like just oh you're like this and that just because they believe in their like what how the earth is which has nothing to do with salvation mm -hmm. well that's good so do you who would you want to debate like some of the people that maybe you follow on on youtube or stuff like uh, that like um, who is or maybe some people that have inspired you to like oh man i really like the way you know they they debate or talk about jesus uh cliff connectly has <clears throat> done a big part in my um apologetic era i guess <laughs> literally he has led me to like a place where like not like i'm like wow whatever he says is true but he's super smart and he comes off at a really good like hmm, he, he comes off a really good manner like he's not like trying to attack other people he's just going to colleges and like explaining his beliefs mm. you know? mm. in That's a so loving good. way yeah mm. uh, although sometimes it could get a little um intense <laughs> but like yeah you know that's cool Okay, so what's his name? Cliff? Cliff Connectly. Okay. Yeah. How many like how much do you think you have consumed of his content? I'm just I'm just curious that the reason I'm asking the question, I should say, is just that I'm asking the question because do you have a lot of do you need to go through a lot of videos or other people to get the information to kind of like base your oh, okay, that's that makes sense. That's true. I mean, for sure you read the Bible too, right? And we'll get to that. But um It's just kind of like, I'm not super apologetic, right? So I'm thinking, do I need to listen to a lot of people like this to be more on a debating mindset or not really? Like, how much do you think you listen to him? A lot? A little? Not really? Uh, <laughs> I'd say a lot. Because, I'd say a lot because a lot of the information that I do have, um, not necessarily like, it, like, whatever he says, it just sparks like, oh, I wonder what the answer to that is, kind of. So again, mm. I, I'm still kind of new. Like I've been only like really paying attention to like Jesus and apologetics for like a year, I guess. Cause last year it was this one kid named Misha. I mean, oops, no, Bob. 
<laughs> okay, Bob. Bob. <laughs> and that was from my public school. And uh, he really, like, he kind of showed me, like, because he was a kid that was super interested in the Bible. And I was like, hmm, that's really cool. So then I started to be interested in the Bible. Mm. So. so he kind of, like, inspired you to be? Yeah. Wow. Looked, yeah. That's cool. Okay, so... If you don't have another uh, question right now, Millie, I want to give you a chance to talk, but I have... No, no, no. Keep keep talking. Okay. I think you're I, doing amazing. Okay. Because I'm just super interested about how you see the the internet world, right? Because you're younger. Oh, my gosh. And you're, you're on YouTube. Like, you're doing your own YouTube channel. We're on YouTube. We've been trying to do this for a while now. And it's hard, right? Like, sometimes the, putting the videos and the technology side and all of that is, like, hectic. But... It's really hopeful from my point of view when when a person your age wants to be on the internet and speak about things that matter, right? And debate and whether you're right or wrong, you know, you like to talk about these things, just like like we said Jesus did at 12. So how did you experience the internet world? I mean, do you is it easy? Is it hard? Do, do you care about, like, comments of people on the internet? Like, how do you feel? Some of the comments, a lot of them are good. They're, like, kind of, like, short amen with the heart, and those are really cool. And then there's some that are, like, the atheists, and I don't really respond. I let the other people respond to them. Oh, wow. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think internet is good um, with the Christian stuff. I think there's a very large rising in, like, Christians, like, on the internet. Especially, like, even on, like, um, actors. Like, there's a lot of actors that are becoming Christian now. Wow. And, um, again, back on the internet, uh, the, it's so funny. There's, like, these videos that are, like, shorts that I always come across. And it's, like, you have the Christians that are, like, trying to um, share the gospel. And then there's the Christians that post shorts that are, like, it's, like, an AI Jesus saying, if you skip this video, you will go to hell. Mm. <laughs> if you love Jesus, type amen and subscribe. Yeah. And I'm, like, what? <laughs> like, where does it, what? And it's people for everything. Mm. And people do likes. I know. I go to the <laughs> comments what? on those, and they're, like, amen. They're, like, oh, I don't want to go to hell. It's, like, it's wow. It's crazy. And yeah. it's, it's nuts. It's ignorance. Ooh. I yeah, yeah. And they're like, they're like just using Jesus to get views and subs. Mm. That's not good. Wow. Okay, then that's how the sense. devil works. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's videos that are. Uh, I watched like, like a couple days ago. It was about this guy that was talking about like how some Christian videos, a lot of them are good, but then there's some that are like just trying to get you to sub, like to subscribe. Mm. And he was talking about the issue of those shorts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's makes it interesting really. I mean the internet really interesting. Okay, so how did you get to the Bible? Like what kind of I mean you mentioned like Exodus, you know, and like all these things in in the Bible. Uh that to me is that's why I feel like you have that apologetic wiring because for example, for me and you know, everybody's different, right? And has different wirings. But for me, uh, when I think of the Bible, like I've heard it so much here and there, you know, like I grew up in church and I've been to so many different churches and then add to that English and Spanish versions of the Bible that I've listened to. Uh, but what the way I work is like a phrase that I remember pops into my mind, but I don't know where it is. So I need to like literally Google like it. Google it and oh, okay, it's in Matthew, you know, oh, it's, it's, it's Paul or whomever was saying that or it's in the Old Testament and I go to it. But I know it's there, you know, so it's it's a little bit different. But I think you have a little bit more of that. Uh, no, I read it in Exodus 19 and it makes it really specific, but it also gives you a different wiring that I think that's why God can can use that, you know, because it's 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 just super specific. You know, when some people that have that reasoning wiring, you know, like one answers that kind of like have a. It's in the Bible, but not. It's just. It's not just in the Bible. It's in Exodus three, right? Mm. I mean, that's very specific. And for some people, that matters a lot. That's like, oh, okay, you're convincing me mm. because it's so important to you that you even remember, you know, mm. the 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 numbers and you know which book it yeah. was. So, 
How do you approach the Bible? Like, what is your, when you go to the Bible, you know, what have you been reading? What caught you? Like you said, you were talking to this guy in, in school that kind of like brought you to the Bible. So how did you start reading the Bible? Um, well, I, I guess from just a lot of, a lot of little stuff like Misha, the Cliff Connectly, and I just want to put this out there. I wish I read the Bible more because a lot of my information I do get from YouTube. And <laughs> <laughs> like you're acting you're saying like he, like I didn't I didn't read Genesis to Exodus. Like I I haven't read the full Exodus. Of course I do. I my brain kind of works like I read a lot of the important parts and then I kind of just memorize it. Especially when people talk mm -hmm. about those exact verses mm -hmm. and them saying the chapters that also helps me to remember that mm. especially because i'll like just over and over you're hearing people talking about these verses these important stuff this this that and then obviously the bible and then it just sticks to my mind so let's say there's a question for example i don't know what's a topic right now that it's interesting to you just one name one one topic in the in the present yeah just like, in general you know something that interests well, you oh there's a bunch of things that interest me um i'd say one of them is um uh probably getting to know these denominations mm, okay so for example a question with that would be what does the bible say about different denominations yeah uh, right yeah. so how would you approach that that question right you have an inquiry yeah. and they're like ah, oh, why are there so many denominations what would be your next step to like i wonder uh, if the bible says yeah anything. so uh the bible doesn't specifically mention denominations although there's one time where jesus is, sends out the 12 and one of them comes back and says we found somebody you know saying demons out of uh sorry whatever like putting demons uh out of uh sorry shunning demons out of your name but they weren't mm. a part of our like tribe mm -hmm. and i think that's like the first start of denominational differences that we get in the bible wow and jesus that's it, incredible yeah, man and, and jesus has some <laughs> epic yeah jesus wow. has some stern words right, can for you that. repeat it again for me <laughs> oh yeah so maybe uh, wants to repeat <laughs> yeah so <laughs> jesus sends out the 12 and one of them comes back and says we saw somebody else uh, take uh shunning out demons uh, but oh. they said, but they, and the 12 said they weren't a part of our tribe. And Jesus said, mm -hmm. you I know, remember that. like, yeah. Yeah. no, like that you shouldn't be they're saying doing my bad work too. Yeah, they're doing my work. Uh -huh. Obviously Jesus wants to have a, con like a personal connection with them, but mm -hmm. it's not like wrong in a sense. Mm -hmm. you know? uh -huh. Yeah, that's really good. So you're saying that's kind of like a, a early step of early. what the nominations yeah, are yeah wow that's crazy yeah that's but incredible I, yeah i <laughs> i think i just been like you you know like now i'm listening to people and i read books and i read the bible and it's been so amazing to understand the bible through history Right, because I was like, you're like, hi, oh, so many denominations, so many Christians. I think there's over uh, six thousand Catholic now. and what? And you know, I, I was, I was like, like you and your mom. Like sometimes <clears throat> we talk about how some people outside they act like a Christians, and they're not Christians. And I have this, uh, uh, you know, kind of bad feeling. Like, so, what, what is this? why they're so good and they don't have God. They don't have Jesus in their hearts. And then, but now reading more about history and reading about the Bible, Beto will know where is it. But Beto say, I mean, right. God say that, well, let me start looking it up. you know, Jesus, <laughs> he just not uh, did the Ten Commands or the Books, yeah. No, the que son los Ten Commandments, Ten yes, Mandamientos. No, no, no. But he wrote on a on a on stone. On stone, Jesus. He also did it in your hearts. Oh yes, yes. And that blew my yeah. mind. Like, pfft. yeah. Now I understand. That's we follow religion, right? We follow Christianity, but at the beginning, like Jesus, he he was not building a a Christian church. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. He he was not building a, a company. Okay. Yeah. This is right. This is exactly how I do it. Okay. I'm, this is um, what I was describing. You said the idea. I'm like, oh yeah. And I remember what kind of like the phrase that God says, which is. It's actually in Jer so I, I googled it and now I see oh, okay it's in Jeremiah 31 33 so now I can go to Jeremiah and look it up right which is different than saying oh it's in Jeremiah 31 33 but uh, anyways let me go to it and read it cuz that one's good Millie. okay uh, let's see I'm scrolling for those of you who are just listening I'm scrolling through my phone to find Jeremiah mm. which is in the Old Testament 31, right here on the Bible app, and then verse 33, where it talks about the law being written not just in the tablets, but also in, in our hearts. That's the... Right? Yeah. So... Yeah, that's the... Verse 33. Yeah, that's the problem with atheists, because they can't... You can't live out moral relativism, because it doesn't make sense. Because I was... Um, went to my public school teacher. Yeah. And... I, I, I wasn't necessarily debating, but I was having a talk about morality. Because mm. if there's no God, reality is subjective. It's relative. Like, mm. um, if somebody dies, there was a famous atheist philosopher that said, did mom die today or yesterday? Does it really matter? Because wow. if there's no God, then Meaning. it's meaningless. But well, he's a mean one. <laughs> it must have been the Grinch. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and I basically told him that's why they're... God, that's, you know, if a baby gets killed, you know that's wrong because you know, you have an A value. You know that baby has value, mm. right? And he's like, well, I mean, I've never been in society. Oh, sorry. I said, and then I said something like it. I said, what determines your mor morals? And he's like, I guess society. Because if there's no God, yes, society wow. determines Humans. morals. Yeah, and then I said, okay, so if the society decides that eating uh, baby hamburgers is good, does that mean that it's right? And he said, I've never been in a society where they've done that. And I'm like, but Mr. E, if, if that really happened, you know that would be wrong. Not because society says it's, not because society, because mm. you have an eight value. And you, it, it's written by God, like yeah. literally. That's, that's why... Wow. And there was this one guy who was debating a Republican and, oh my gosh, so obnoxious. <laughs> he was talking about how God, uh, more, God's morals is subjective. And I was like, what? Like, and he was, he was he's saying because God is a person and it's his moral standards. So that's subjective. What? Mm. God is omniscient. He's above all. That's why it's final. Wow. Well, I love that. And here's the verse that... Uh that says exactly that, that it's written the law. It's, but this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my instructions deep within them and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. So as a verse, right? it's not, the law is not just out there on a tablet. And if I don't have access to that, well, it's, it's lost. Or even, you know, if you don't, it's, it's in your heart. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, like we follow this guy named Jordan Peterson, right? And he would say, it's kind of like the conscience speaking in your life, you know, kind of like saying, hey, that's, there's good and wrong, good and bad, right? Mm -hmm. And, and having that difference, at least at the beginning comes from that conscience with, could well be the Holy Spirit speaking to you and saying, hey, there's a right and there's a wrong. Because it's written in your heart. Mm -hmm. Like you should know, right? What happens is that this is kind of like just a theological or biblical thing that I've learned is that we um, we make callous in our heart, right? So we believe something is wrong and we still do it. And guess what? It's, it's almost like like a stone that gets covered by by layers and layers and layers of of dust until it becomes just a huge bigger mm. stone right or no that's just like the layers of the earth right it's just dust that steps on top of each other until it's harder to get to the to the like dig down into the underground right so in this case dig down into your heart because now it's 
it's callous, it's hardened, right? And the Bible also speaks about, you know, when um, I think it's uh, Ezekiel. See, I'm just like, I think it's Ezekiel, but somebody like you would say, no, it's Ezekiel 31, whatever. <laughs> but uh, it says that he can change a heart of stone and make it a heart of flesh again. Mm. So, I mean, there's beautiful analogies in the Bible that yeah. kind of like point back to like, when you follow Jesus, when you know God, he can remove the sin. He can remove the callousness, the I don't care, the 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 meanness, right? And make it more kind. Like he's capable of doing that. I mean, to me, that's ultimately, you know, yeah. what, what the yeah. gospel is. I agree 100%. Yeah. Right? Yes. Cool. Want to say something, Millie? Yeah, I've been thinking about the how we need to do religion without religion. Mm. That makes sense to you? Yeah, there was a guy that said, don't follow religion, follow Jesus. Mm. And it, it does make sense. Because we need religion. But what happened, with, that became our identity. Mm. We start, so what, you yeah. know, pointing fingers and see people different and we're so holy. And no, we all are sinners. Mm -hmm. In your, what do you think is the difference chance when, you know, following a religion or even following Christianity and following Jesus. What is, what's, okay. What, what's the definition of Christianity? Christianity is your, what the first word is Christ, Christ, right? Jesus. And it's like your, your fault. It's, it's kind of like your, it, being a Christian is your fall in Christ. If you're not following Christ, you're not a real Christian. That's my... Simple? <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. So if you're following Christ, yep. you're a real Christian. Yeah. Cool. Uh, what does that look like? Do you know? Like what? Okay. See, now we're getting into um, the works because uh, mm. works, um, in my opinion, I think we're saved by Jesus's blood on the cross and not by our works, but sincere faith is backed up by works. So um, a lot of... Catholics and Orthodox would uh, disagree with that by saying um, our works do got to get us to heaven in a sense. And I say, I don't think so. Cause Ephesians two, eight to nine, I talked about this with pastor Mike. He was, uh, it says we're not saved by, we're safe by grace, it, mm. not by works. So we can boast. <clears throat> but then we have in, in James where it says faith without works is dead. Mm. So I, Again, I think the scripture is being pretty clear, you know, because mm. if you have faith, works come with it because you're sincere. You know, mm. if I love Jesus, I'm going to try to follow him. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's so beautiful, man. So do you think the Bible is clear then? I mean, you just said it is clear in that sense, right? But and as you verse, read it and as <laughs> it's not, it's complicated. Gary, if the Bible was super simple, we wouldn't have thousands of people who are like studying the Bible, like all the mm. time trying to figure out answers. If the Bible was super clear on every single thing, we wouldn't have denominations. Mm. And why do you think it's not so clear? Uh, well, it has to do with culture. Uh, mm. A lot of the language was built in a structure where it isn't really as clear as English, right? So in, in Genesis, when it talks about the days, days in Hebrew is yom, which has a variety of definitions. It can be 24 hours, 12 hours, a period of time. So the Hebrew language and even Aramaic, it's super complicated languages. And you have to put in the cultural context. So yeah, that's, that's why we have so many people trying to find out these things, you know? And yet, do you find truth yeah it. oh yeah yeah i mean the scripture is like when the scripture says for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not share should but have eternal life i'm pretty sure that's being pretty clear mm. <laughs> whoever believes in him shall not perish right oh. that's being pretty clear yeah and but also again you have to put everything in context it says that even the demons believe and they mm. shudder so wow the demons believe, but they're not saved. So what is the believing meaning? To believe is to trust, hmm. right? So I'm believing, I'm trusting in Jesus. You can believe all you want. Some people believe that Jesus is a real person, <laughs> you know? So it has to do with trusting. Wow. 
that's that's what it is. Hi, but you're <laughs> so, me, that's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Okay, um, I have one last thing. I don't know if I, I mean, I kind of want to ask for permission. Your mom is here, you know, in the audience. And it's more like a personal question about family. So I'm going to look over here. Okay, I have the yay. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit personal, okay? I'll tell you my story first. And then if you want to expand, if it relates to you and you want to add to it, great. If not, you know, that's totally okay, right? So my story is my parents got divorced when I was young, right? And my story is that um, my mom came to America. My dad stayed in Mexico. And one time I went to a camp and I remember I was, um, they had just kind of like a, you know, a counselor or, you know, the people that kind of like run the camp. They're like, okay, we're going to go into groups and you're going to read the Bible. You're going to pray, but then you're going to go with the counselor and you're going to kind of like talk to them. Right. I, I don't think they said go to the counselor. They, I think they just had the groups. Yeah. And then the counselor, because he heard my story that all oh, my parents got divorced, he wanted to take me aside to kind of like inquire a little bit more about like maybe how I was feeling. And I was, I don't know, like 14 maybe. <laughs> so it was a while back. Uh, but I'm saying this because I think for a, for a season in my life, I was praying to God, God, can you re reunite my parents? You know, and I think it was a sincere prayer, right? I was a kid and I wanted to see my parents together, even though now I feel like, man, uh, <laughs> I don't think I wanted to. Like, God was like, really? Do you want to see that? Cause it <laughs> They're going to kill be, each other. It's going to be explosive, right? But you don't know that because uh, I was a little kid, right? So my prayer was, I want to see my parents together. And, but this is what's so interesting, okay? This guy came to me. He learned a little bit about my story. And then he said, well, can I pray and agree with you to ask God if he can bring your parents together, right? So he prayed right there and then with me. Now... I'm 43 and my parents never got back together, right? And actually my dad, you know, remarried and he's happily living in Mexico and whatnot. Now, so that's a different story. But all that to say, I always go back to that moment. I'm like, wow, it's so interesting that somebody had the courage to one, like get to know my story and then the courage to pray a crazy prayer. You know, can you reunite my parents? And there's, uh, again, like I always say, you know, when I, <laughs> something pops in me and I go to the Bible, I don't remember exactly where it is. I think it's Isaiah 55, but it says, um, no, it's actually not Isaiah 55. That's the one that says the word of God never comes back void. But there's another one where it says, uh, even before you request, I'm already, I already have my answer yeah. underway, yeah. Mm -hmm. right? So I think that was God giving his, his answer is on their way, you know, by somebody coming and praying with me and saying, this, this might be a tough time for you. The heart of God is that of being united, mm. right? And we're agreeing that that's God's desire, you know, men have free will, right? People have free will and Everybody can make their own choices and decisions and God ultimately respects that, <laughs> right? Because he gave us that, that choice. But when I look back at that moment, I'm like, wow, that was God answering, maybe even like healing my heart mm. as a little kid that now as a grown up man, right? When I look back, I'm like, I don't, I don't resent, for example, my parents being divorced, so much because there were people around me that had the heart of God and that were praying like, that's, that's not okay. Let's pray. But people make their decisions. Right. So I think that healed me that I think that that brought me, and maybe that's just one example. Right. But I think that that was God sending his, his, um, his answer for me so that later on when I'm 40 or when I was 35 and I thought of like, Oh, I had a a broken, you know, what do you say? Family, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But it's like God 
God was there. Yes. Jesus was there. Yes, I agree. That's my story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, for me too. Like my parents are divorced. I don't I I don't think I ever prayed for them to get back together because I was still kind of figuring out my relationship with Jesus. But I st- I did wish my parents were together, obviously. I wanted them to be together. Now that I think of it, I don't think again, when God answers prayers, he doesn't always say yes. Mm. Either it's yes, it could be no, or it can be not yet, right? Or it, maybe others. I, again, I didn't really name them all, but so I think sometimes uh, a mom and a dad could get together. It's what God wants, but I think sometimes it's not what God wants. And yeah, the divorce was hard for me in some spaces, definitely, because like I had to go to the houses. My mom and dad aren't, you know you know, kissing or hugging anymore. So it's like, you know, it's sad, but like Jesus heals, Mm. you know, just like in your story. I think you, that's a very good uh, representation of what Jesus, you know, can do in someone's life. Wow. That's super powerful. And I'm tearing up, but I'm making that tear get back inside. <laughs> get back that's, inside. I feel, like a, I feel like a Simpsons thing to do. Like the dad, like uh, tearing up. Like. Yeah. But you know why I wanted to say this or bring this conversation? Because you're on the internet. I'm on the internet. I'm older. Um, you know, I don't know how many more years God will give me here on earth. I know I hope many. But also, I know I probably won't make it to the end of this century, you know, it's because of my age. <laughs> and I think God, God works. He's so generational, right? So in a sense, like you're here because we want to empower you and say, go for it, Chance, you know, s- share your faith online. And maybe even by sharing moments like I just shared, you know, some other kids can be Hmm. healed or yeah. can at least be pointed to Jesus and come to him for healing. Yeah. Right. Because we live in a generation where if I, if I saw the divorce of my parents, now it's even, I don't know what the rate is, you know, but the last time I checked, it was like 50% of hmm. marriages and they ended up in divorce in America. Right. So that's a lot of brokenness and that's a lot of kids who are maybe experiencing, right. The hurt yeah. or the pain yeah. and, and I think having a channel on YouTube can point some of them, you know, by sharing stories like this, mm-hmm. can point them to Jesus and to healing. Yes. And to... Forgiveness. Forgiveness. I, I totally agree. Yes. And lastly, I say also, um, I think that marked me so much that I said... Don't cry. No, I said, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have a family, you know, mm. I'm going to stick to my family, you know. But it was because of those prayers around me because yeah. I, I could have ended up... Saying like, you know what? My parents did it. I'm going to do it too. I don't care. You know, marriage is hard and having kids or whatever. But uh, I think those prayers helped me, right? And and not just the one I had there, but many prayers throughout my life where where I know God kind of like instilled in me the, the, hey, family is the most important thing I created in this world. (laughs) I, I agree. You know, the Bible talks about how, you know, have a family. Mm-hmm. It's very beautiful. Cool. All right. So we're going to go to our emojis. Unless, Millie, you want to say something? Let's keep going. Okay. I'm going to go to these guys over here. So these are, these are called From Blasphemous to Divine. Yes. Okay. So we can we can stick to the maybe the apologetics or you can talk about whatever. You know, the Bible. You can talk about family or things you see in society. But the idea of the emojis is that we go from the worst idea to the best idea, okay? So I call this guy blasphemous, then skeptical, skeptical yeah. then it gets better, it's inspired, then holy and divine. And today's going to be super fun because I've never heard a 14-year-old go through the emojis on this show. <laughs> okay? So, to kick it off, Chance Melelo. According to you, what is the most blasphemous idea out there? I like this sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> the most blasphemous... Uh, the most blasphemous what? Idea. Idea out there? The worst idea you can the think of. The worst idea ever. Probably... Probably... 
doing everything you can to go against Jesus directly well, and trying to make others go against him as well, probably. Oof, that's good. Skeptical emoji. Where do you see skepticism? What makes you doubt or what are you skeptical of? I'm skeptical on a lot of Christian YouTubers. <laughs> are they really trying to do it for Jesus mm. or for the subs? Hmm. <laughs> wow. Inspired emoji. What gives you hope? Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's easy, man. That's so good. Okay. Holy emoji. What's a holy idea according to Chance Melillo? Trying to spread the word. Yes. I agree. And doing it in like different ways, like funny ways, serious ways, stuff like that. And emoji ways. Yes. yes. And lastly, the divine emoji. What is the highest idea, the most, like, the best idea you've ever heard? The best, yeah. That I've ever heard? Do I, th like, I think it is. That one, uh, you think it is. The, m the most divine thing, I think, is Jesus's and God's love for us. Wow. Boom. So good. Boom. That was so good. Okay. Where's my... Oh, there's my music. I guess I put different music to end the episode. You were talking about if I ever use different music. I guess I'm using different music. Okay, Chance, you're on the on, on YouTube. Yes. Okay, we want more people to follow you. We want to get you to a million subscribers. <laughs> and continue your apologetics journey on YouTube. And even maybe even be a guest with some other ah. of the people you admire or that you want to be yes. debated by, right? So where do you want to point people to on um, your channel? How can they find you? Um, you can go to my channel at, um, oh, which, oh, this camera. You can go to my channel at, um, on YouTube and uh, put in at Christ is King, no spaces, 331, and then you'll find it. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. I think at some point, I mean, that's that's really cool, Crisis King. Um, yeah, you don't have social media and stuff like that, right? Only YouTube. <laughs> I mean, YouTube. Only YouTube. Yeah. Cool. Maybe one day. If, no, if, no, no, no. Maybe when he's 21. But. Yeah, but well, I, I was going to say. If, I'm controlling here. I'm, I'm a mom. I too. was going to say, if maybe at some point, Instagram is no longer a thing. So maybe there's a new type of like social media. Yeah, there might media, be a new app. Yeah. Right? Because who knows? Okay. Thank you, Chance, for being on the show. Yes. You're awesome. Thank you so much for we having love me you. here. Yes. Thank you. We love you and we're so excited to see what what is next. Yes. And I'm excited yeah. to see where this channel also goes because you're really, I think, making a difference. And I think this channel is going to go places that you wouldn't even dream of. Mm. You made me cry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you guys for being here. You know, you can like, subscribe, share this episode yes. with a friend. Look us up on Christian Podcast. That come for more conversations like this yes uh i think i have a comment here hi maya she's maya watching sends you, <laughs> she's maya your, sends she's her your greetings. fan number one yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay there we go okay bye everybody Ta bye